no role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, on this episode, I want to go over kind of a recap of the last five episodes that we did um, based on the Ken Gosnell Forbes Leadership article, Five Commitments Leaders Can Make in Difficult Times. Um, we've had a significant amount of kind of uh, positive feedback and questions that have come in through um, our, our Instagram DMs and email over the last five weeks after each of these episodes that we've that we've published um, where people had specific questions about each one and and I, I kind of think that the idea of kind of summing it all up and and talking about these from a, a holistic standpoint as opposed to diving deep into each one um, might be uh, in, in order here um, if you've not listened to them already please go back and do so um, we started with talking about committing to learning from every person in every experience um, followed up by committing to finding and fighting for your passions. Um, next, we talked about committing to delivering twice as much value to everything. Uh, number four was committing to rewarding team members and those who help you. And then last Monday, we talked about committing to replacing the word can't with will. And, and again, a lot of these um, these kind of headlines are, are, are a little fluffy, but there's some meat in there on, on each one of them. Um, and we, we talk very much in depth about each one as we go along. Um, but, uh, you, you know, t- let's talk about this a little bit, because the, when I hear this as, as a whole, the word commitment jumps out at me. Everything is about making a commitment. Um, and, and sometimes that word can be scary. You, you know, making a commitment to something means there's going to be some sense of accountability, whether it's holding yourself accountable or asking people to hold you accountable. Um, but, but what do you think about how these kind of, you know, go into each other, um, for the last five weeks? What, what I like about it is it on the surface, it feels very timely and relevant. And if you dig into the article though, there's plenty of examples of, of the past, of history, of times, you know, decades and decades ago when this kind of idea was applied. And I like that because I think that it speaks to this idea that um, while while leaders and expectations of leaders um, and, and the way in which people lead will continue to evolve based upon society and expectations and that type of stuff, there are definitely some core pieces to just leadership and showing up for your people or or as the article kind of states like in difficult times what you can do to help you know bring yourself and bring your team forward um, that, that many of these can be timeless and in in uh, and will always have some level of impact so I like the fact that it's not a you know it's not a, a new 2022 type of theory idea of this is it now this is the thing that you must go do this is more of like look when things get hard these are these are you know some behaviors that you need to commit to as a leader and I like that I like the fact that like it's being led by holding yourself accountable being self-aware you know, considering how you show up for your people, making sure that you're very focused um, on on the here and now, and that in that you're making adjustments to make things um, work better in in a difficult situation. And and again, you know, difficult is is subjective. Uh, it's difficult right now because uh, kind of in this post pandemic idea, there's so many things happening. In, in the economy, in the workplace, um, in society, there's different challenges, there's different ideas of work and jobs. And like, there's so much things that are, there's so many things going on that I think leaders have to commit to themselves um, some things that they're going to make sure they do at the core of who they are. So that, as you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you can be consistent and you can be predictable as a leader. People know who you are, where you stand, what you believe in, you know, what you're going to do most of the time. And that creates spaces where people can feel comfortable. They can feel trusted. They can feel psychologically safe. So like, I like this idea and I, like I said, and I really like the fact that it's kind of borrowing from things that other leaders have done in the past to figure out how to work themselves through. One of the first things that I thought of when I, when I read through this and I'm thinking about what you're just saying is that if, if you think you're the first person who's ever gone through a difficult time, you're wrong, right? So this this idea of that that you're you're embarking on something that no one else ever has before might be true from a a process standpoint like the the things that you do might be different 
in terms of the the application of things because this is brand this is a brand new thing whatever it is but the the fact that it is a difficult time to me just just means this is something that we've not done before so we don't necessarily know how to do it cuz otherwise what's difficult about it right like if it's just the same thing over and over and over and over again if it, if you still find it difficult you might be in the wrong role right mm-hmm. like so so yeah. if it's difficult to me that just says it's new it's it's something that is that is something that I, I don't encounter every day. Um, I don't. It's not something I've encountered before, or if I have, it's been you know these are these are rare times. Um, and and so it's about uh, it's about having to summon something within yourself that you don't necessarily have to summon every single day. Because if you did have to summon it every single day, then it wouldn't be a difficult time. It would just be life. It would just be just be the day to day. So, so if I think about it in that regard, yes, you can absolutely learn something from the past. You can actually absolutely look at how other people have done things. But where this really resonated with me as a whole was that a lot of these things that that are talked about in the article are things that they're the very last thing on a lot of people's minds when times are difficult. When times are difficult, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't do any of these things. I have to focus on whatever the problem at hand is. And and the article to me says, no, no, by doing these things, you are focusing on the problem at hand. By by making a commitment to learning from every person and every experience, you are, in essence, solving the problem and, and getting through the difficult time. By committing to providing twice as much value you are solving the problem in in have in this difficult time there there isn't like a oh let's clear away all of these extra this this extra stuff Th- this mm. isn't the extra stuff this is the stuff a- and it can be very difficult to see the forest through the trees so to speak if you're in a difficult time but but this is the roadmap to getting through the difficult time not the the thing that you that you shirk off because now you have to focus on whatever the difficult time is you know it's a great point because i think what ends up happening sometimes is when things do get difficult so from a leadership standpoint um, there are things that will make your job difficult uh, a lack of people or you know less labor to be able to spend um any resource any, right any exactly any resource it could be you know uh, services, products that you sell, whatever it might be, but like anything at all where you're attempting to lead people uh, to get to get work done in, in an effective and efficient way to to meet or exceed you know goals from an organization or your business. If you are you know the leader of your own business, like in those times, it can it can quickly become about that thing. It can quickly become about just trying to you know, um, meet that, uh, that business metric or just, you know, kind of basically just kind of survive the day to a degree. And, and I get, and sometimes it has to be like, like, I'm not saying that, um, you know, if, if you are a small business owner or you're leading a team and, you know, y- y- your company is at the, at the edge of bankruptcy or like, you're not going to make it like that now. Nope. Nope. We can commit. Let's say, you know, will instead of can't like, no, like there are going to be times when those things are imperative that you have to spend your time and intention and focus on those types of things. What I'm saying is that not, not on that extreme element of it, but in most cases, when things become difficult, we can tend to shift our focus or how we're measuring, how we're showing up as leaders based upon these things that are, um, that, that are you know, I, I think temporary in, in what's urgent right now instead of what you're saying, which is like, look, that, yeah, that thing exists. That thing has to be considered. That thing, whatever that might be, has to be looked at and potentially solved for. But how you show up as a leader at this time is going to either make that significantly harder or a little bit or a lot more easier if you are spending time doing this and committing to yourself to help your team work through it. And and so I think it's a good kind of note to take and perspective to have of considering that. It was like, yeah, when, when it gets difficult, um, sometimes you have to... Like, I always use this, is, is this example of like, there are times in my career in the past where I was like an assistant manager and I would work with other assistant managers and, um, you know, I would come in for like a, a, a later day shift and the manager that was there was somebody that I was maybe like they weren't productive that day. Maybe they weren't productive all the time. I don't know. I'm just saying that my job, I felt would be easier if they weren't there. 
It's a very diplomatic right. way to say that. Right, right, right. Yeah. I know that in theory, having more leaders is mostly helpful most of the time. But in the case that I can't, you know, uh, trust or believe that you're going to do what you're supposed to do, why don't you just go home early today and I'll handle this? And and the and it's it's the opposite of what you would do in this kind of perceived difficult time. But I would then go and talk to the team and say, like, I'm here. I need your help. I'm committed to doing this in regards to like making sure you have whatever you need. And I'm asking for your commitment to just handle these things that I know that you're capable of handling. And instead of, you know, saying, I'm the only manager, I have to be in everything, uh, you know, and even if I sent the person home or not, and just kind of falling into this victim idea, uh, instead committing to what I'm going to do, asking my team to commit to me, and what could be a really difficult situation, actually became a much better and easier situation uh, because I was empowering people and it was really clear on who I was, where I was standing, what I was going to do. And it was clear to them on what I needed them to do. And so it was kind of like the reverse of what you would normally look at. But I think that those are those are times and examples where in the moment, um, the difficulty was only having one technical manager in a building. Um, but the commitments that we made to each other in the moment and asking my team to do more uh, than what they normally would, and me committing to supporting them in that work uh, provided a better result for us in that moment. And I know it's not like a longer term theory, but that's kind of where my brain goes in thinking about the power of staying focused on a commitment. Even if you're asking people to do more work, if it's clear to them what's going on, they tend to do that for you. Yeah, I, I have a friend that I went to high school with who um, we you know keep in touch you know here and there. And he is the general manager of a car dealership. And um, I asked him probably you know, a few months ago, what's going on with all the, the stock issues? And we're not, I'm not in the market for a car right now, but I was kind of interested in, to, in, in, in finding out what he's doing with, with his business because you know, it's hard if you go into a lot of car dealerships around the, around the country, a lot of them are empty, you know, and there are some, there are some exceptions, but very few of them. And he said that one of the things that he has done is not just assumed that in order to uh, be successful, <clears throat> they have to have more inventory and get more cars in. Instead, he has said to his salespeople that th the reality of the situation is that whatever is here is here and whatever is not here is not here. So instead of you know, fighting amongst each other to try to be the next person to help the, the next customer that walks in or, you know, you know, fight for whatever that the, the highest markup on the vehicle is. Instead, when you when a customer comes in and you're talking to them, forget about what you can sell right then and there and, and talk to the customer about meeting them where they are and say, hey, you know what, if this isn't something that you absolutely need right now, why don't you let me help you order something instead? Because one, you'll pay less for it. You won't you won't pay a markup on it because we don't mark up anything when we when we when we order it. Um, and two, he's asking his people to say there's going to be less money here for a little bit of time because we don't have the inventory. But the worst thing you can do is to drive your customers away um, in 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 the actions that would normally bring them in. Instead, be an advocate for them, be an advocate for each other, and understand that this too shall pass. That we will eventually get through this and move on to something else. And he said that that has been relatively good at the most important part in his mind, which is not having a tremendous amount of turnover. Because in a lot of these businesses across the country, the a lot of the the sales staff are just quitting because they there's their the cars aren't there, which means the commission isn't there. And a lot of those dealerships are gonna have some difficulty when when the problem does pass, when the inventory does return, which I mean anybody's guessing when that's gonna be, now they're gonna have to restaff their businesses. And um and this guy is gonna have less of a of a hard time doing that because a lot of the people are still around because of the ways that um uh, that, that he has helped them kind of get through this. And, and so at, at the end of the day, it's, it's not kind of ignoring the problem or, or trying to say, you know, will it not, not to exist? It's to say, what resources do we have and how can we use those resources to get through this difficult time um, so that we can meet our people where they're supposed to be from an employment standpoint, uh, as well as where, where our customers want to be. And, and I, it, it, it's tough because it means doing something completely differently asking his people to do something completely differently than he's ever asked of them before or that they're even used to doing. 
Um, but the ones who keep an open mind to doing it that way, uh, he says they have found a lot of success in, in this in this new process. So I, I like this. And, and you can see this examples of this in businesses all around where, you know, uh, uh, ignoring the new normal is not going to get you anywhere or or throwing the same things at it that you threw at the normal way of doing business two years ago, that's not going to solve it. You have to think outside the box, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to this episode's One Minute Hack. But first, a few words from our sponsors. The One Minute Hack. All right, for this episode's One Minute Hack, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull up this article, and and uh, we'll leave the link in the episode notes. Um, read the article, and I want you to focus on any one of the five things, any one of these commitments, and, and go do it. Actually, do it in your life. It, it could be the easiest one of the five. Pick the one that that that, that you think is the most easy to do, and, and actually go and do it. Um, re re listen to that episode that applies to it, or or listen to it for the first time if you haven't, and go and do that one thing. And see how different life is for you and your people as you go about doing this if you are in a difficult time. Um, I think that, that we can say this all day long, but it, it's not going to... It's not going to actually make a difference in your life until you actually go do one of these things. And you can see that making one of these commitments, even if it means that you think that you're focusing on something that shouldn't be focused on in the moment um, because there's this big problem at hand, uh, th this is the way to focus on this problem um, in a kind of a roundabout way, but it's the only way that will actually solve it. Yeah, no, I think it's a great call and, and a, good, a good practice in um, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, the times right now, what's going on, the the evolution of leadership, this higher bar of expectation. Uh, and any time that we get a chance to take a look at some of these ideas and put them into, into practice, I think is really, really important. Yeah, that's true. In my personal situation, I'm, I'm going with number four, which is commit to rewarding team members and those who help you. Um, there are people on the teams that I consult for and the teams that I lead who um, – I believe I could do a better job in rewarding them uh, in, in outside the box ways and having conversations with them around what things they're looking for um, when I can't necessarily reward them in the in the traditional ways because of a lack of resources. Uh, and so revisiting those conversations with those people, I think, is going to help me a lot. I uh, love it. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time. <laughs>